Hello everyone, it's me, Dante of the West, joined today by... Uh, Rick. Uh, my, I go by Rick usually around here. Uh, so, how's it going? Oh, it's going well, and you're doing okay today? Yeah, yeah. Good. So, the reason that we're doing this interview is uh, to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of the current BYS channel. Um, and before we continue on in the interview, I just wanted to talk real quick about how we first met. Um... So it was actually really cool because when I first started Blood Yokai Studios, we uh, kept going through different editors and teams kept changing that like I was working on, I think, Rosario Vampire Bridge for like a year, year and a half before the channel even went live. Uh, and that's what we're celebrating today. Uh, but uh, finally, after going through like the fifth, in, uh, the fifth editor who was just like, you know what, I agreed to do this, but editing sucks. I really don't want to have to do this. Uh, I spoke to Radiant Lucia, who is the voice of uh, Mocha, and uh, I just, you know, sent out a widespread email, and I was like, okay, so, can anyone find an editor? Because, like, I am so tired of, like, getting our hopes up and then just watching it, you know, like, fall to the ground. Can we find an editor to work on this project? And, you know, she was the very first one to respond, and she was just like, you know what, I happen to voice in a Devil May Cry Bridge series. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll poke the guy who runs it and see if he has any advice. And uh, after that, uh, you know, he got back to me, and we started working together, and that's how I met Rick. Yeah, I, I do, I do want to say, though, like, uh, around the time when we first met, uh, it was pretty much... Uh, we, didn't, we didn't talk for a while until... Um, after like I think the first or second episode, and then we I got pulled into a call around uh, it was like two a.m. one a.m. <laughs> it, it was with you and Lulu, and uh, yeah we we just started like hanging out uh, pretty much for like three hour a three hour four hour call and I don't I don't even remember the conversation but that's when we started you know like talking and and getting along. And that's so weird, because, like, I remember us, like, uh, talking and getting to know each other and all that before we even started, but I, I guess so much time has gone by, but, like... Yeah, I mean, I th you might be thinking of the second time I came back uh, uh, during uh, when Scotty was the your editor. Yeah, that, that's probably right. Because uh, what had happened originally was you had your own Devil May Cry for its series, mm -hmm. um, and Lulu was the voice actress for Lady. Um, you had already released, I want to say, about two or three episodes at this point by the time you came over and joined BYS um, and became our head editor. And I want to say right around episode four? No, 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 it was episode three, because that was when we introduced Yukari. Uh, right around the time episode three happened, you had to go on hiatus and at that point, we... Because, I mean, like, voice actors were quitting all the time. Because, I mean, like, there was even one occasion where someone accidentally dumped, like, a whole bottle of water um, on their microphone and just couldn't afford to get a new one. We had changed so many cast members at this point where it was just like, you know what, let's just reboot the series um, just so we can have a consistent uh, uh, group of voice actors. Uh, right around this period of time when you had to take off, we brought on another editor uh, temporarily, and his, his name was Scotty. He worked on the first two episodes, and I guess while you were on your hiatus, you like randomly discovered us again and decided to come back. Yeah, I th that pretty much. That that is how it happened. Yeah, I, I contacted you uh, again. Uh, it was through YouTube <laughs> uh, inbox, uh, which wasn't really being used that much at the time. So I was actually surprised I got a reply. But yeah, you, you allowed me to come back in. I mean, it's always been a pleasure working with you. And I mean, like, I tell this to people all the time that, like, if it was not for you, like, BYS never would have been a thing. Like, you are the sole reason why BYS was allowed to continue. Because, like, we had no video editor. Like, you know me, I am absolutely awful when it comes to any kind of computer stuff. Uh, watching me edit is like trying to fit a square through a triangle. Um... And, like, you were just so dedicated, like, it was just so impressive, where it was just, like, you gave up working on Devil May Cry to be a part of Blood Yokai Studios, like, that was how dedicated you were, like, we didn't ask you to do that, you were just, like, uh, full on into trying to get episodes out, like, it was just so incredible, and then when you came back, like, it's funny you mentioned the YouTube inbox, because, I mean, like, even up until they removed it, like, I was never using it. And I felt bad, because, like, when I finally discovered it, I found, like, all these, like, three-year-old messages that I never got <laughs> uh, from, like, other people asking, you know, like, hey, do you ever want to do, like, a collaboration? Or, like, hey, can I interview you? Or something like that. And, oh, man, I always felt bad. But, I mean, like, that's how we first met. Um, 
And since then, like, we have uh, seen you attempt a couple of different series, and, like, you and I have even co-written a uh, series or two. You were doing Devil May Cry, and then after that, you ch- attempted to do Helsing, which you called Hellwank. Yeah, and that one never came to fruition. I don't think even even a sample of it has ever come out. Yeah, but I do remember you did create a really cool opening. I think you used, because uh, uh, we both have some more taste in music, you used uh, Disturbs, Another Way to Die for your opening. Oh yes, that's right. One of my favorite things to do, and I, I would still do it occasionally, uh, well, not, not not anymore, but is uh, even before I had uh, you know a script out or anything, I would make an opening. I had one for Devil, uh, Helsing uh, Bridge, and yeah. Yeah. And, like, you and I, like, we're still waiting uh, on some voice actors, I think, like, three years later. But uh, you and I even wrote, Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon together? <laughs> yeah, that is true, yeah. So, now I know that uh, you've stepped down uh, from the position of head editor for BYS. That is something that we now have Cures of the Dead, Josh, doing. But you're still with us in a capacity for, like, voice acting and writing and whatnot. So, hopefully soon we'll be able to see some of the projects that... Uh, You've been behind up on the channel. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so before we continue, uh, I think the next question is just like, um, you know, what are some of your personal hobbies? Personal hobbies? Now, um, let let me think this one through. I I was normally going to say listening to audiobooks, because that is something I do a lot. But that isn't isn't a hobby, that's just something to pass time. Uh, A personal, um, my personal hobbies I completely forgot is... Because I haven't done it in a while, is uh, yeah, I, I like to uh, produce music, mix music, uh, especially uh, mi- you know, like a uh, video game uh, soundtracks. I like to recompose, uh, remix them. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to do, and it, when when I do have the time to do it. So yeah, I yeah. can cons- I consider that a hobby. Yeah, I remember uh, one of the uh, I think the most seen videos that you worked on uh, was the Dankin Rampa eight bit theme that you did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, like you always had a passion for eight bit music, and so I remember hearing quite a few remixes you were doing, and even talking about like your is, is Grant Kirkhope still your favorite composer? Yeah, yeah, he's he's one of mine. Grant Kirkhope, David Wise, all I got, there's a, there's a lot of them, but yeah, I really like Grant Kirkhope. He's he's really good. Yeah, like, he's, he's also a really nice guy, if you ever see him on Twitter <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, I wouldn't say nice, but he's, he's funny. He's funny. Really? <laughs> no, I mean, he, he's nice, but in a, in, in a funny way. Like, like he will call you a dickhead, but you'll know he's being nice about it. I, I feel when he does that, like, the other person really screwed up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, great, it's great. Oh, no, I still remember that cool video with him in the banjo uh, poolside back when ukulele was coming out. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like you're you're a really interesting guy because I mean, like you have some really incredible hobbies. Like I know that when I first met you, you had like the largest N sixty four game collection that like I had ever heard of. That's right. I do have a. I still like if I look down on my old shelf, I can still see it right now to my left. Is uh, oh my N sixty four collections? They're very dusty now. Because I haven't touched them in a long time. But yeah, I even have some that are still in the box. Conquer's Bad Fur Day is incredibly rare, just to, just even with the box alone, uh, around $300, $500. So, yeah, I, I, I like to collect obscure banned N64 games. Yeah, um, like, I, I think that you even had some that were considered demos that, like, never actually made it into regular production. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. But, like, that that's incredible. And, I mean, like, you're also a really active guy. Like, I know that uh, you're, like, one of my only friends that I've ever been able to talk to uh, martial arts about. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've done, you've worked as a personal trainer. You're a martial artist. Uh, you even went and trained with professional wrestlers to try and get into that. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I did try to, you know, delve into the uh, professional wrestling just because uh, I've always been a fan of it. And I've always wanted to try it after... After three years of uh, M- MMA, mixed martial arts, jujitsu, and uh, I trained with, I trained in the uh, the Dully Boy School, and uh, yeah, yeah. And that's in Florida, right? 
Yeah. I remember correctly, yeah. Yeah, because I, I know that you uh, moved down there for a little bit. and. Uh... Yeah, because I, I traveled to like a lot of gyms. Mm-hmm. So th- during the way, like I ended up in Florida, and yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like I think you were doing that right around the time you and I, because uh, I mean, like we used to send each other stuff. Uh, I used to send you books on uh, Jeet Kune Do. Like I know for a little while, like that was a real heavy uh, topic of interest for the two of us. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, like, do you have any other like personal hobbies or anything like that you feel like sharing? That I can remember. No, uh, hmm. I mean, we talked a lot about martial, uh, mixed martial arts. And stuff like that you know like just anything in general and uh mm-hmm. yeah that's pretty much all i can remember i think we we i i do like talking with you a lot about weapons you know like uh, medi- medieval weapons well because i know uh this happened a couple of years ago but back when i visited uh cleveland ohio i went to a museum that uh actually had weaponry from uh, maximilian the first who was the uh, the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire for a period of time, and they had this beautiful halberd on display that I ended up sending to you that I think they actually based uh, the design on it for Dark Souls, the uh, the Black Knight halberd off of it. Mm-hmm. So, like, talking talking with you about, like, old designs, uh, even, like, medieval warfare and all that, like, I, I have a lot of fond memories of those conversations. Yeah. Um, so, I know this is a question you probably get a lot, but what was the first anime you ever watched? <laughs> First anime I ever watched, uh, I don't remember, like, I was probably eight, and uh, I think it's it was probably Evangelion. Really? Yeah. It was around that time when I was watching it. I mean, I didn't understand it. All I, saw, I was about to say. <laughs> like, as an eight-year-old, all I saw was, uh, was like, uh, was Asuka. I guess she was my f- uh, first waifu. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. The angry German, uh, and then eventually you find a career in professional wrestling. You know, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Although I, I, I don't, you know, I, I didn't do much of wrestling to, to my uh, shame. Right. I, I, that's got to be, that's insane, because I feel like my first anime, like, I remember, like, because we didn't really own, like, a TV or anything like that uh, for, like, a good amount of my life, but I went over to a friend's house, and I think I saw Pokemon for the first time, mm. uh, and so, like, that was my first, like, anime and manga series. Um, so, I guess, since Ava was your first series, uh, anime-wise, what was the first manga you ever read? It was actually Naruto, when I was, uh, like, 11, 14 uh, you know, back at the time, like it's not my favorite manga, but you know, it was back at the time when kids uh, were first getting into, like school kids were first getting into uh, anime and whatnot. I think everyone, I think a lot of people would probably say it was Naruto during that time. Oh, easily. Um, I, I guess the thing that kind of surprises me is so then that means that you went through like a period of four years where like. Um, you weren't reading manga or anything like that. Did you know about manga uh, right around the time that you got introduced to anime, or was that something you just kind of stumbled across? I did not know about manga, no. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Because I, I have a lot now, but... Right. And so, like, after all these years, what would you say is, like, your favorite manga and anime series? Uh, favorite uh, manga series is definitely Berserk. Uh, you know, like the 300, 800 chapters it has, or how, however many it has now. It's like, never going to end. <laughs> it's getting close. It's getting close. Have you been catching up? It will it's never really... end. It will never end. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 really good. It's probably one of my favorites. Um, I hope it ends soon. You know, it's being hinted at. So, you know, it, it'd be nice to see that in my lifetime. So. Well, because that was a big concern where it was like the writer is going to die before we get an ending. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like a lot of people learned this the hard way when the creator of High School of the Dead passed away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Um, So Berserk's a great choice. So then what is your favorite anime series? Favorite anime? I think I've alluded to it a few times that people have watched uh, my history or something like that. But it's definitely Code Geass. Right, and I know a lot of people are really divided about the seasons. Like, I've always been a big, big fan of the first season and didn't really like the first half of the second season. Uh, really got into it again when, you know, things started picking up. Uh, do you have, like, a favorite season, or is it just the show as a whole? It's the series as a whole. I would consider myself, at times, not right now, but at times, an unhealthy fan of it. <laughs> but, but, yeah, yeah. I, I do try to keep my composure talking about it, so. Nice. 
Yeah, I know. Uh, that's actually a fun little thing. Is uh, we have a BYS Discord, and there is, and that's actually the Discord that you set up. Because once again, I'm bad with computers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, but I mean, like you uh, installed this thing called a waifu bot, where you like type in the word waifu, it tells you who your waifu is, and I don't think people have known that. It's very convenient that you always get a certain character from that series. <laughs> that is that is true, and we will talk about that later. <laughs> all right, all right. So I guess my next question would have to be, what is your favorite movie? Favorite movie? It, yeah, it's the uh, the Dark Knight trilogy. Really? Yeah, okay. and not, not any of them specifically, but if I do have to pick one, it would probably be the least appreciated one which is batman begins okay because uh i i really like you know a good origin story and i think that's the first time we've got a very decent one of batman in the live action form in hollywood form and yeah it's really good yeah i would completely agree with that um i know that uh, everyone kind of has like a little different thing that they appreciate about the movies um Looking back at that trilogy, the only thing I can remember is just the third movie when they're escaping from the prison. Just the, this is awesome, awesome, this <laughs> is awesome, awesome. Uh, but is there something that uh, really like attracts you to it? Like, is it just the sense of writing? Is it the cinematography? Is it the acting? I think it's Christopher Nolan's uh, cinematography is really good. Um, mm -hmm. uh, even for, I didn't think he would be able to do a, a you know, a comic hero uh, series well but he's definitely done amazing work with that even what was the latest one of the latest films he's done dunkirk right yeah yeah that one was also really good like he it, like the way he just frames certain scenes and uh the camera the lighting he uses it like always has kind of like that same like melancholic ambience but it, it's so good right no he's he's really talented like i wish we'd see a lot more from him Mm -hmm. um, so I guess moving on from that, like, uh, do you have a favorite kind of music? Like, do you have a favorite band? No, uh, my favorite band uh, changes from time to time. But I think at the moment it's, you know, I usually pay a lot of attention to indie bands and stuff like that. So uh, mm -hmm. at the moment it's it's an indie band called uh, Fozzy, uh, which, you know, has really good music. Uh, what kind of music do they do? Are they like rock and roll? Like, it's like uh, alternative rock with uh metal uh instrumentals nice okay and that's actually something that a lot of people don't know is that you come from a family of musicians like your dad actually plays in a band yeah my dad used to play in a band uh we have a lot of instruments that's kind of where i started messing around with them now he prefers performing them on stage i prefer uh producing them uh behind closed doors and just uh listening to it um Listening to the stuff I make, uh, like I like doing, I think I said earlier, 8-bit uh, music and stuff like that and orchestrated remixes. So yeah, yeah. Right, because there's a, there's a big difference between like the joy of performing and then just also kind of like the joy of seeing it kind of come to life. Uh, like I know some musicians where it's just like the, the best part of the job is the performance versus for others they say the best part of the job is actually like kind of uh, working things out in the studio, watching it kind of come to life. Um, I think that... I mean, the best example of that that I have uh, is probably, I don't know if you've seen the Queen movie, um, where they kind of go into detail on, there's a scene where they're you know, talking about, uh, and this is where the operatic comes in. Oh, uh, you mean Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's that scene where they're just kind of like messing around in the studio, and for a lot of people, that's just the best part of it. I really like when movies, uh, when, you know, like uh, film documentaries or mock documentaries, whatever, whatever they're called. Uh, especially of musicians, just has scenes of them in the studio, like the first time. Uh, I think uh, one of the other uh, movies that did this, uh, Bo no, I was going to say Boys in a uh, Straight Out of Compton did, did a similar thing too. It, like, yeah. it's one of my favorite mo moments uh, whenever movies do this. Nice. So, um, I guess the next question uh, would be, like, do you have a favorite food? Favorite food? Not really. Uh, uh, I guess pizza? A good answer. A good yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's probably the one thing we really connect on, and it's not just because of Devil May Cry. I, I, yeah, I remember uh, <laughs> Devil May Cry 5 lunch, we ordered pizza. Yeah, we and, did. And we stayed uh, up late, I think. Yeah, we stayed up. Well, I stayed up as late as I could, and then I died because of the pizza, and... 
had to yeah. fall to bed, but yeah. Yeah, we, we played that game in sync because they advertised uh, multiplayer. And, yeah, and uh, we couldn't co-op. get multiplayer to work, and it ends up it, it's not exactly multiplayer. But, you know, it was yeah. still fun. It's still fun. So I know that you're an animal lover, um, so I have to ask, like, favorite choice of a pet? Favorite choice of a pet? I really like cats. I've always liked cats. I like dogs now, too, because I have one. Oh, I have two. So I can't really choose between them, but I think I have more childhood connection with cats. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, I really do love dogs now. So, yeah. And what kind of dogs do you have? Because I thought you only had one. Well, I have I have a... We, we got a recent one, a new one uh, recently. Uh, they're both terrier mix, so they both look the same. Which is really nice. Nice. Yeah, because like, I've, I've also been an animal lover for most of my life. I've raised uh, two beautiful box of dogs uh, throughout my life, and I do it again in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, what are some interesting facts about you? Interesting facts? Um, I don't think people realize that I wasn't actually an editor when I started editing. Um, <laughs> uh, I was actually uh, l- bullshitting off my ass when you first contacted me, uh, including uh, with everything I did in my channel with DMC Abridged, uh, I I couldn't get in contact. I I didn't have any voice actors except for a Lulu. I was able to get Lulu Lulu and uh, the lady that voiced Patty, I can't remember her name, but I was able to get them, but I didn't have a team. And uh, so I had to edit everything, mix everything together. if I look back on the episode of DMC of Bridge, it's actually pretty, like edited really bad. But uh, and then uh, when you contacted me asking if uh, I was an editor, I was uh, sure. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, because uh, you know I was like, hey, this is pretty cool. I, I get you know well, I, I've always seen like a bridge like studios be, uh, you know form up on channels, and it'd be really cool to be in one. And uh, that's why I uh, sort of agreed at that time. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it was just so incredible because I mean, like at that point in time, you literally could have showed me anything, and I would have been like, "This is brilliant. This is incredible. This is amazing." <laughs> uh, but I mean, like you have really come a long way with editing, and I know that it's kind of a shame because now we can't find your Devil May Cry abridged on like YouTube anymore. That's right. Uh, the channel has either been deleted or repurposed. I'm not, I don't remember exactly which one of the two. I'm hoping maybe uh, it, it's up there on the Wayback Machine. I know nothing ever, nothing ever escapes the internet, so I'm hoping maybe it's there somewhere, or maybe someone, uh, some DMC fan saved it and re-uploaded it somewhere. I'm, I'm really hoping, because I mean, like, I, I still keep in contact with certain BYS fans who have been with us since our first 500 subscribers. Like, I, I really want to imagine that, like, someone went to your YouTube channel, downloaded it, and after this goes on the air, uh, they're just going to say, like, hey, I have the Devil May Cry bridge. <laughs> that, that would be nice, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so, do you have a favorite drink of choice? Now, this can be, like, alcoholic or not. Favorite drink of choice? It's, you know... Uh, you know, I do the occasional, like, cocktails and stuff like that, but I think I, you know, to quote my favorite gentleman of all time, Stone Cold Steve Austin, it would just be beer. Really? What kind of beer do you like? Just beer. Uh, usually Mexican Tecate is really good, as well as Blue Moon. Uh, I have a lot of good memories of Blue Moon because I've used it, uh, I drank it, uh, along with the boys whenever we would go, uh, fishing and to the lake uh, during my work days from a few years ago. And we would make that a yearly tradition to buy a bunch of Blue Moon and just take that out to the lake. Yeah. I, you know, I think I remember one of these trips. Uh, I, I, I remember I said like I was jokingly going to buy you a shotgun because you, I think, got drunk once when you were camping. And you told me you like went to go and uh, take a leak. And, like, watching you from, like, across, like, a river or a stream or something like that was just this bear watching you. Yes. There was a bear. We, we had a, a bear encounter. Uh, yeah. Like, I guess one thing I would say to that is never get between a bear cub and its mother. Oh, definitely not. That That's an easy way to, you know, that's an easy way to get done in. Yeah. 
So uh, the next question would be, um, so what made you start a bridging? What made me start a bridging? A lot of people would, would either say TFS or um, Little Karibo inspire them to start a bridging. For me, it was actually the video game abridgers like Son of Sparta. Yeah. Who did the original yeah. DMC abridged and Adam West Lapdog. Yeah. Who did the video game uh, Majora's Mask Zelda uh, a bridge series. I really, I really like the style, and f- and that was a time when abridging video games was new. That that's that was something that was very weird to do, but also you know like very refreshing. And uh, while I didn't abridge video games specifically, like I wanted to sort of uh, keep that style when I did mine. Yeah, like I I have fond memories. Like I haven't seen any of the videos in many many years. I'm not even sure if you can still find them anymore. But like Adam West Slept Dog was uh, one of the creators that I subscribed to because you used to be able to actually download their episodes on like iTunes. Um, mm-hmm. And so like uh, he would release videos. I I know he did all of uh, Ocarina of Time, and I loved that series. Uh, did most of Majora's Mask. Uh, Set of Sparta was also a fun one. I think that was one of the first Abridged series I started watching alongside yours. Um, and, like, I, I love the backstory for that because it was made by, like, him and, like, a fellow classmate who was the voice of Lady. And he was actually turning in the Abridged series as, like, his homework for, like, a editing class or something like that in college. That's r- that's right, yeah. Like, that that was just awesome. But watching him work on a video game, and then, like, I don't think anyone else really touched Devil May Cry 3 for, like, a bridging or anything like that. And then, like, yours was, like, the uh, like the only other Devil May Cry bridge that I could find at the time. And I'm sure there's a lot more now. Yeah, but, yeah there, there like, probably, and there might be. I haven't looked in a while. There might be, you know, like, some new DMC bridge out there somewhere. Or maybe, I, or maybe a Son of Sparta returned or something. I don't know. God, man, I hope, because I remember, like, he was a cock tease, because he was just like, and this was, like, you know this is old internet, uh, going <laughs> back a ways, because, like, he was saying, like, after he was done with Devil May Cry. He'll do Bayonetta. Uh, he, yeah. He was going to do Bayonetta, yeah. <laughs> like, the original Bayonetta. I don't even remember when that came out, because, I mean, they've, like, released that on, like, even PC. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, but, Yeah. Okay, so I know that um, you don't really call yourself a voice actor, but do you have a favorite voice that you would do? Well, yeah, since I don't really consider myself a voice actor, I have no fond memories of any voices I've done, except for Dracula, of course. Yes! Which I really did have fun doing recording it. It, that, it, it kind of hurts my throat doing it, but I like doing it anyways. I mean, it, it's worth it. Uh, I... Uh, I, and I'm not just saying this is like the dude who's making you do it, but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it is, it is, it is. It, it's easy for me to say, but I mean, like, I, I remember back when we were doing that episode, uh, like, your impersonation of Dracula was just so iconic. And people don't actually really remember that for, like, Billy and Mandy, they based Dracula off of Blackula. Yeah. And so it was it was kind of like going back to the original source material where it was just like, man, who do I know who could do a really good impression? And you were, like, jokingly, like, doing a Blackula impression, and I was just like, Rick, you're Mocha's dad. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that, that, you know, scene with you and Mocha, like, going back at the house where, like, he's just slowly losing his mind, like, that is probably one of my top favorite moments of the entire series. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. Like, part of, part of me uh, kind of wishes that it'd be funny if we could just, like, edit out uh, Mocha's dad, like, like just the way he looks, and just put in Billy and Mandy's Blackula in it. <laughs> oh, man, that would be great. So, I guess the next question would be, so how did you come up with your screen name? Screen name? I have several screen names. Uh, Scorpion420 King was, I think, the first edgy screen name I could think of as a 14-year-old kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I think after that it became Ricky Derp, which was associated with my, uh, PSN name, and and I've used it a lot, uh, when, I use that name a lot when I had a a Let's Play channel. One of the things I, I I don't mention much is I used to have a Let's Play channel, and, uh, yeah, I, I, I use the name Ricky Derp, you know, it's part of my name, it's part of me, uh, but, you know, but after that, you know, I just went for something simple, I changed it to... Baron, it's usually Red Baron, but I know Twitch, it's Muno Baron, it's usually sometimes even Von Baron. It's always Baron in some shape or form, but um, I 
it's based off of i just really like the red baron like the pilot mm-hmm. like you know the story of well it might be exaggerated we'll never know uh i just really like some kick-ass uh pilot dude yeah and I mean, like, I, I, that's something I got to introduce you to, too, because there's, there's a band that's a personal favorite of mine, and they, they kind of do power metal, but it's uh, called Sabaton. And, like, they even have a really great uh, history channel. And I think um, what they do is they go into detail on, like, all the different songs that they've done, but every single song is about some sort of, like, really different, really interesting historical event. Uh, they came out with a album based on World War One recently where one of the songs is actually based off of the Red Baron. Yeah. And that's actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about, like, your screen name, like, that's another really interesting thing about you, is you've been a Twitch uh, uh, streamer for a little while now. You actually, and, like, I, I was losing my mind when you told me about this, you had a really incredible experience where you were playing a game, and one of the voice actors for the game that you were playing actually discovered you and raided your stream. No, oh, that's right. That's one of the first times I've been raided... Definitely, uh, definitely not the last time, but one of the most memorable times is being raided by uh, Brian Deckhart, who voices uh, Connor in Detroit Become Human, while I was playing his game. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, I wasn't expecting it. it. It was fun experience. He's a really nice guy. I've always heard he's a nice guy. I even watch his streams sometimes because he, he does. He is a good streamer as well. Like one of the, one of the things, one of the few voice actors are actors you know who are actually really good twitch streamers is uh brian deckhart yeah man that that's so cool like for him to be able to find you like that and like i i, I probably would have been a total troll about it like i probably would have like shown up into your stream at the very beginning and just gone like who's your favorite character <laughs> there will be consequences depending on how you answer <laughs> yeah no exactly yeah <laughs> But that that was such an incredible experience because I think like out of nowhere you got like uh, three four hundred brand new viewers. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, that put me on edge. Yeah, no, I bet. Now that we talked about your screen name, and I'm aware that like you haven't really done like editing in a little while, but can you walk us through your creative process? Like, what are things that you're looking for? Like, when you're getting ready to do some voice acting or when you're doing editing, like, can you walk us through that real quick? Yeah, uh, now I don't know anything, what I could say about voice acting, because for me it's just reading off lines. So I don't have any you know, like meditative strategies for that. But for editing, one of the things I guess that I could consider being, being you know, like part of a, you know, like a setup is I would always do the audio first. So just so that I could close my eyes and hear the entire episode and how I want it to play out in my head. And it, w- it would give me an idea of how I would want a certain scene to look. And I would always do this. Uh, I didn't do this at first. And that was during a time when I, I didn't like my editing. Uh, after I started doing it this way, I, I think I became more appreciative of um, my editing at that, at that time and even now. Yeah, like, I, I think that has probably always been, in my opinion, the most difficult thing about being an approacher and being in the approaching community is that everyone, especially back then, was very, very quick to jump down your throat if the editing did not meet, like, their particular standard. Like, if, <laughs> yeah. if you, like, even missed, like, a single lip flap or two, like, I remember people going on, like, the abridged forms and just being like, this entire, like, the editing is garbage. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, those were good times, I'll be honest. And so, like, you kind of, like, fiddled around with, like, different editing styles, and there are different styles, uh, people don't really understand that, um, and, like, your most recent style is something that, like, you've even tried teaching to me, and, like, I'm a bad learner, but, I mean, to show how effective of a teacher you were, like, I was eventually able to edit something. Like, I ended up doing a birthday video for a voice actor by the name of Eagle Eight Burger, um, and he's a good friend of mine. He uh, he did a birthday video for me, uh, so I wanted to do something special for him. Mm-hmm. And because he's Canadian and a big hockey fan, I ended up taking the audio from uh, the Goon movie, where they all get drunk and they're offering to sign the main character's dick. Um, and that took me, I want to say, a couple of days to do, even though it was only like 30 seconds worth of footage. But It's still lessons... really good. It's a really good way to start is, you know, doing the clip, clip bridges. 
uh, for, for movies and stuff like that, yeah. Well, yeah, but what I was going to say is that, like, your method was so effective and you were just such a great teacher that, like, even there was hope for me. So, I mean, like, that that was something really cool to kind of be able to share with other people because I know you did a video on it. Yeah, I, I, did, I did do a video series on it. I, I never continued it, sadly, but, you know, I, I can always go back and once I'm in a mood to edit again, you know, I could probably, you know, keep keep you know doing lessons or something like that uh yeah i i would say i didn't you know like feel good about the criticism back then and uh i would try every single time to try a new method a new method of editing because i wanted i wanted the crit criticism to turn into a positive mm -hmm. so i would keep coming back uh, back to the drawing board uh, to find uh, wh what can I do that's new? Like, what new thing can I do to get them to like my editing now? And I kept doing this, you know. And, uh, yeah, you know, until, you know, eventually you got to where we were now. Yeah, and, I mean, like, I always felt bad for that criticism because, I mean, like, I always felt like you were doing a terrific job. Like, you're still one of the best editors that I know. Um, oh, no, it's it's fine, like... I, like I appreciate it now. I guess I, I guess I would say like the criticism. Like without it, I, I probably would still be doing like the same um, bad mistakes I've done back then. Well, there was a difference between like constructive criticism and just like I think a lot of the stuff that people were throwing at you. Because uh, like my my favorite example of like how to teach someone the difference between uh, being a douchebag and like giving constructive criticism is uh, saying you suck you suck, here's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, like, it's something that could always help you. And so, like, I mean, I remember, like, even getting upset myself with some of the comments where it was just like, okay, you say, like, you don't really like this, you don't really like that. No one really offered a solution. No one really, like, everyone had an opinion, but no one had a solution. That's right, um, yeah. It, it was it was also usually mainly the lip syncing. Uh, no one would give me a solution for the lip syncing, as much as I ask or try to, you know, like adapt to their styles, so eventually I just kind of made my own style, which which they, I I still get some minor criticism for it, but that's because uh, it's apparently too fast. I think it's perfect now, and that's so one of the one of one of the first times I've actually disagreed with the criticism because I've always agreed with the criticisms as much as I didn't like them. But mm -hmm. but yeah, like I, I I like the lip syncing style I I I made now. Yeah, and I mean like that that's another thing I gotta say about you is like you're very like you're able to persevere and I mean like I feel like especially like if I would have been handed that, you know, amount of criticism when I was first starting out, like I probably would have quit. Like I, I've got no shame in saying it, but you like kept coming back and just like tackling it and over like you were able to like over exceed the expectation like every single time no matter what was presented and i think like the first time like people really you know started to kind of like ease up and say like this guy knows what he's doing this around episode six when you did all that crazy stuff with gain oh that's right yeah i think that was also the first episode of gain wasn't it yeah it was that was the uh the appearance episode but like you did the um uh like all the visual edits like turning gain into go gain 13 uh, doing the J. Jonah Jameson thing, like, all that stuff. And that was still, like, even looking back at it now, I can't believe you were able to make even half of that stuff work. Yeah, yeah. And I, th and I think, uh, like, yeah, I, I think even back then, like, that episode's good. Although, I, if, if I look back at it now, I'll, like, I, I just realize, like, most of it is still images with the <laughs> lip syncing over it. So, uh, you know, I, I definitely try and, put mo try and put motion into it now mm -hmm. when I edit, so... You know, that's it's one of the things that, you know, adapts over time. Well, because, I mean, that that's actually leading into my next question. Like, the favorite video you've ever made. And I know that a lot of people, like, comment on your work on the original Kokoro Connect episode. Um, and, like, how smooth everything looked. Like, especially when, like, Iori's walking while she's talking. Uh, just how difficult that was. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, like... I get a lot of people saying, uh, I, I know, like, uh, our, our friend, uh, ABH Challenger, uh, I, tells me, uh, that Kokoro Connect episode is my magnum opus. I would d disagree, because I don't know which one is my magnum opus, uh, because, like, I, I did enjoy editing Kokoro Connect Bridge, I just didn't think it was 
Amazing. I actually had more fun uh, editing the least popular of our series, uh, which was Pokemon The Origins of Bridge. And yeah. One of these days we're going to release part two of that. Like, it, that that was the thing. is like, we, we have, like, all the lines for, like, part two and all that. It's just a matter of, or most of them anyway, but, like... Didn't we do, like, the entire series, though? No, no, no. We condensed the entire series into the first episode. And so, like, the second episode was supposed to be, like, the epilogue. Um, okay, okay. Like, um... I, I, I know, like, because we've been waiting on lines for so long now, but the idea that I was going to do is um, we were going to make it that, like, um, Red's father was Giovanni, and so it was just, like, this awkward conversation between Red and uh, Giovanni, where, like, Giovanni is trying to explain to him that, like, he is his father. Like, because they, they do hint that, like, the dad had to, like, run off and become a gym leader. And yeah, he's yeah. conveniently, like, the closest one to Palatown. <laughs> um but it was just like it was just this really depressing backstory for like giovanni being red's dad but what would you say is your uh your favorite video that you've done i would say yeah it's pokemon the origins of bridge nice now the one that i had the most fun with uh is it's probably the most controversial one we've done uh and that's uh that's uh magi a, a bridge right magi <laughs> Oh, man, the story about that. God damn. Okay, so for people who don't know, because I know for a fact that there's only been like 2,000 people that have ever seen the Magi. Um, so we were really excited because like it was the first time that like I was really co-writing something with someone and it was another voice actor friend at the time and like we put such a deadline on ourselves because we were going to premiere it at SakuraCon while we were still doing Rosario. Uh, and we also, like, had the big event planned because we ended up doing the panel with some guys from the Palatown Champions Abridged, uh, the uh, guys who did Fairytale and Pokemon at the time. I know they disbanded now, but uh, it was Magi. We took, like, the first four episodes of the original series and we tried condensing it. And we got into a lot of trouble uh, with people just because of how long it was because it was the longest video we had ever done at the time at 16 minutes mm -hmm. versus now like there's a lot of the bridge series that do like half hour long episodes or like if you count like TFS's most recent uh, episode 60 if you count all of the parts with that that is like an 80 minute long episode but people thought that we were taking way too long with Match Eye, but it was the stress of getting that done uh, within such a short period of time the length that it was at and the fact that we split it between two different editors, because we had actually split it between you and then a good friend of ours who also ended up editing episode, uh, I think it's eight of Rosario. Uh, and his name was Orimo VA and his brother Dazed Artist. And so they ended up working with you for Magi. So we premiered that at the SakuraCon panel. And then when we uploaded it... It was taken down within like the first thousand views like really quickly and every single time we tried bringing it back like it was just immediately taken down before anyone could watch it so like only two thousand people have like ever seen that episode mm. yeah no but, i remember but I, I i that that had to have been weird because i think that was your first time collaborating with another editor on a project and you were doing it with two other editors i mean it was the first time i met uh orimo and his brother and yeah, it was it was good times because uh, it sort of uh, stay up all night uh, actually getting this done. Yeah, no, it was insane, and like the creativity that came out with like you guys working together was just phenomenal. Like I I remember you guys made the opening trailer for Magi like when we didn't even talk about that. Yeah, the trailer that you never asked for, and we just. Randomly, made yeah, them. like, because uh, like Orimo <laughs> like likes to troll people occasionally, and so like I, I even remember like he did this in a joking context, but when I first met him, he was just like, uh, I am just here to tell you that I'm doing my own Rosario Vampire Bridge, and it will be better than yours. <laughs> Uh, but, like, he was working with you, and he was just like, you know what we should really do? Let's not work on the episode that's like, needs to be done in a week. Let's work on a trailer for the episode. And, like, he did this, uh, really creative Robin Williams, uh, You Ain't Never Had a Friend Like Me, um, uh, trailer. Because the joke that we, uh, wrote was that, uh, the genie was Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't understand him because the head was trapped in the lamp. Uh, 
but like he sent that over to me just going like this is what I did I exist to troll you meanwhile it had the opposite effect where I'm just like holy shit this is amazing when will you have the final version done <laughs> oh I remember now the reason we made it yeah we, we were gonna trick you and thinking we, we got the episode done <laughs> and uh, I remember the look of excitement on your face or well I couldn't see your face but on your in your voice the sound of excitement thinking you uh, were about to open up the episode yeah yeah and you know what even after because like that trailer still is on youtube like people can still watch the trailer yeah uh, it's still there it's, it's, it's the only thing that yeah. made it like i think it's on the the second channel we ended up making which was just home to magi but you can still watch it but like it it was you know just a complete opposite experience where it's just like yeah wait till he sees this oh crap he wants more of it <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Okay, so that's that's kind of a question going down memory lane. So, what do you wish you would have known when you first started out doing this? Editing is hard. That it is. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean that's that's all it. That's all it is. It's editing is hard. I shouldn't have it, bullshitted my way into those five or six years of editing. <laughs> But, you know, because it's hard, but, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I'm still very grateful for, like, all the help you've given us, because, I mean, like, I have met so many incredible people through bridging, and I, I completely credit that to you and your talents. No, no, I, it's fine, man, you know. It's it's the classic tale of someone who bullshits himself into Harvard University and uh, actually ends up, you know, like, uh, <laughs> learning uh, physics, advanced physics. So, you know. <laughs> I like that analogy. And I mean, I was actually having a conversation with a guy the other day about how difficult it is now to kind of get into a bridging and how high we've kind of set the bar for the barrier to entry. Because now, like, back in the day, like, even if you go into the earlier episodes when, like, I first recorded for Skune, I was just using a basic, like, Logitech uh, desktop microphone. Mm. And now it's gotten to the point where, like, people will, they're a lot more... Um, they're a little bit more harsher on their reviews of episodes. So, like, now all of your voice actors have to have, like, a professional quality microphone. They can't just have, like, a desktop mic anymore. Your editing has got to be completely on point. The writing has got to be completely on point. And if it's not, like, your entire series can fail just based off of the reception for your first episode. Because yeah. you just get so demoralized. Yeah, I would say that, yeah. But it, it's just crazy how far it's come. Because, I mean, like, I remember starting this where, like, people were just like, I'm going to go to Walmart, I'm going to buy, like, a, a Guitar Hero microphone uh, or something like that, and, like, I'm going to make a series. I'm going to use Windows Movie Maker. Hey, it, was it, was just... it was really easy to do in a bridge series back then, I can tell you that, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I guess this is probably something that is may sound like a weird question, but, like, do you have any dream projects uh, that you would like to do? If so, like, what would you create? My dream projects would probably be the one and only thing I kind of ever want to do. And I know it, it'll probably take a while, but it's just to revive or reboot DMC Bridge. And I would love to see that. I mean, I, I would love to be able to share that with everyone at BYS. Like, that, that's kind of also one of my personal goals is, like, seeing that take off. Yeah, ex exactly. Yeah, it, for sure. And it, and, it, and it's sitting there, you know. Like, DMC abridged. I mean, DMC hasn't really been touched in terms of a bridge series as much. So, you know. And I think I even... That's right. I voiced for Dante in, in some random DMC bridge after I finished my own series. Uh, way after I finished that, you know, just because I love DMC so much, uh, I really, in the back of my head, I just really want to do this series again. Nice. That that's so cool that you were able to continue at least voicing the character, even if it was through a different project. So I guess that kind of answers the question of like, what a bridge series you'd specifically want to attempt in the future is just Devil May Cry. It's yeah, it's just Devil May Cry. I might even make it my swan song of editing. If I would have to, but yeah. Yeah. So, I, I know the answer to this question, but this is something that I still ask everybody, is just like, uh, have you ever been to a convention? If so, what's your best memory? Yeah, the, the answer is, uh, I haven't ever been to a convention. Um, uh, and in, it's not just because I'm an introvert, although, although I think that's sort of changed over time. Uh, I don't do usually that well in crowds. But also, I have a incredibly huge fear of flights, which, you know, um, I think it started when I was a kid. Uh, my uh, eardrums uh, burst uh, when I was on a plane when I was four, and that sort of traumatized me 
uh, afterwards to uh, n- not want to be <laughs> on a plane. Um, <laughs> I don't think I ever even told you that story. Yeah, so I mean, like, I guess the point is just like, if we ever want to see you on like a BYS panel in the future, like we either have to drive to your state and host it there, or we have to like drive to your state and drive you to SakuraCon. Now, I wouldn't go that far, but yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I guess the final question, which uh, we kind of hinted at at the very beginning of the interview, is who is your waifu? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I have, we do have a Discord channel. And uh, like, he, like he mentioned earlier, uh, uh, we have a, I have a waifu bot that I placed into the channel. I did not make the bot. It was a friend of mine. And uh, I was able to rig the uh the voting system because what we would do is type in waifu and you would get a randomized waifu from any series ever to exist in anime and i rigged mine to always give me a c2 from code geass (laughs) (laughs) i don't think people ever caught on like like uh they've always you know like wondered like why i always get her and i was like that's that's why because i rigged it obviously so Oh man, and, and that's great. And I mean, like the Discord has been so fun, and it's been especially now that like certain you know things like the YouTube inbox system and all that kind of uh, you know uh, got the way of the dinosaurs is just being able to stay in touch with uh, with fans that way. And so like that's a free Discord; anyone can join to keep in touch with us. But it's just been so great. Some of the members we've been able to make. And if you like, happen I... to, and if anyone happens to roll her too, I've also rigged it so that you get an achievement called "You Have Good Taste." <laughs> okay but then by that logic if anyone immediately types in like c2 sucks or anything like that what happens <laughs> well i don't know about that but but yeah yeah really so there's no like sense uh disturbance of the force or anything like that you don't just like immediately pull your i mean it'll probably just... i don't i'll probably know i'll probably figure something out maybe, maybe ban that person <laughs> Oh, I want to imagine you're just like randomly just like walking around. You don't have like notifications on your phone or anything. You just immediately like sense that. You pull out your cell phone. You do like that one legendary speech where it's just like, listen here, you little fucking shit. I did like 97 tours in Afghanistan. I have a thousand confirmed kills. Banned for life. <laughs> I have watched all the anime. I've watched 500 shows. And I'm here to tell you C2 is best girl. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. But... I, so that is essentially the end of our interview. Um, but once again, I mean, like, this has just been absolutely incredible. I cannot believe it has already been 10 years. I mean, I remember just starting this, like, back when I was first starting to learn how to read. Uh, and just all the friends and uh, memories I've been able to make through the Abridged community. And I, like I said, I do owe a majority of that to you. Just because, like, I, most of my friends even today, like, are only ones that I met online. Like, uh... And the community has just, you know, saved me at some of the lowest points of my life, like when, you know, I had cancer, or, like, when my dog was dying, and stuff like that. Um, and, like, I never would have been able to met or really experience any of these things had it not been for you agreeing to help us. Um, and so I am truly, truly grateful for your friendship. I'm glad that we have, you know, been able to make it through these ten years, and, I mean... I really wish everyone would kind of knew, like, know how influential you've kind of been to me as, like, an artist and just, like, you know, as a human being. So, I mean, like, thank you, Rick, for everything you've done. The pleasure was mine, man. All right, is there anything else that you'd like to say before we cut this? Editing sucks. I will completely agree with that. (laughs) All right, everyone. Well, thank you for the 10 years. We hope that you enjoyed this interview, and we will see you soon. See you guys around. Bye.